You're listening to the AdCast, the podcast for marketers and advertisers with your host, Eric Elliott. Welcome, welcome, welcome to the AdCast. You may be wondering, well, what the heck is the AdCast? Is this just some other podcast that's just going to be showing up in my SoundCloud, my iTunes, or my Google Play, or whatever? No. This is the podcast for marketers and advertisers. If you are an advertiser, you should be listening. If you're a marketer, you should be listening. You might learn something and something that's going to benefit your career and your business. So today... I have none other than the man himself, and hopefully we can put some applause behind us. It's Mr. Jay Howard. Hello. (laughs) So Jay actually works on our team. He is actually our success manager, and what that means is he's actually looking under the rugs after we're running campaigns or even during campaigns. So, So for our client partners that partner with us, you know that there's someone that's always looking under the hood and always doing maintenance on your car. And for us, if you kind of equate that to the real world, you don't want to do maintenance just when it's needed. You want to do maintenance before you need it. Right, Jay? Exactly. Yeah. You don't need somebody to, uh, you know, remind you when the oil needs changed. Once that light comes on in your car, then it's probably too late. You know what I mean? So uh, essentially what I try and do is just uh, make sure everything's running as it should be. And if it is, great. Uh, we There's always space to do better. And if it's not running so well, we're going to figure out what's going wrong. Uh, write it and uh, get you pointed in the right direction and kind of uh, optimize from there. That's true. That's true. Now, Jay, it is 2019, the last time I checked my calendar. One of the things that have happened, you know, in this industry, I've been in it for a while, you've been in it for a while, we've seen uh, things happen in different states, different markets, different agencies, different sizes, different advertisers, different mediums, right? Mm -hmm. How much do you think marketing and advertising has changed? Because the truth is, some people don't know there's a difference between the two. So how much has marketing changed? Let's start with that. Oh, uh, marketing, you know, uh, you look at marketing and advertising and how much they blur, you know, in any kind of, uh, you know, medium. Uh, take, a, t- take for a social media, right? Uh, me- social media used to be 100% just straight marketing, right? Uh, people just trying to be funny, uh, people just trying to uh, take pretty pictures, uh, that kind of thing. It just lends itself purely to this kind of marketing utopia where people are kind of rewarded on their merits with, what, followers and, uh, you know, things like that. And uh, once it kind of blurs, once people kind of see it, and once, you know, to be completely just bare bones, once people see that they can make a lot more money than is being made on it, mm-hmm. then, uh, you know, money becomes the driving factor for, you know, social media. So uh, you want me to take a pretty picture, uh, tell me what to take a pretty picture of, and also pay me for it. And, <laughs> people forget that part. Yeah, at the, uh, at the end of the day, you know, it's, it's if you can make money from it, uh, and you have the audience there that believes in what you do, then, you know, uh, advertise it. Now, we just talked about just marketing. I mean, it's changed so much. And I think for us to even talk about how much marketing has changed, I think people would actually have to just sit on the couch and grab a bag of popcorn and just listen for a long time if we talk about all the changes that have happened in marketing. But the mediums have definitely changed. Some of the outlets that people have used, like like let's just say radio. Radio now has changed than it, has changed, uh, than it was 15 years ago. Um, well, you know, the actual signals and everything else. I mean, those things haven't changed. But, I mean, I guess the way people are consuming media has changed. The audiences aren't growing as much. Even though the populations in the marketplaces are growing, but the uh, audiences on radio and television, they're just, they're not growing. It's on demand. Right. You know, if, if the audience aren't, aren't growing because most of the time that people are listening to radio nowadays are coming you know, to and from a job, listening in the car, anything like that. If people are listening to music outside of, you know, the actual radio, then it's virtually on demand. Right. Uh, I have a song that I want to listen to. I'm going to listen to that song uh, and then I'm going to put it all in a playlist. And uh, sure, I can be served ads and everything like that, you know, locally. Uh, so if you're looking at, you know, your typical local radio station, uh, it's more about the community than it is about, you know, the actual uh, content, I guess, right? Yeah. You know, it's uh, 
the the people that are you know serving the content. It's the people that you know are covering something locally that you care about. Uh, I still listen to a lot of Nashville mm -hmm. uh, local radio stations because that's that's who's covering my Titans. <laughs> you know that's that's who's you know Ooh. actually in the <laughs> actually in the uh, you know the country music uh, mecca there. You know, so if I'm over here, I can listen to those radio stations over there instead of just going on something like a Spotify, something like a Pandora that's strictly content driven and listening to uh, ads that really don't you know have any relevance for me locally well i mean you just we just talked about radio just now what's interesting is that new music does not break on the radio anymore <laughs> i mean you know we got paul in the back here like this guy or or the djs or the people who are really in the mix or who follow the artists they're going to get to the music before the stations do because the stations may have a little bureaucracy on what's going to play and how many times you play something else or play a certain tune. But new music doesn't break on the radio. So how much – I know it's community-based and it's providing a great service to the community. And I don't want any of our radio listeners to think like we're against radio, but – we're just talking about some of the challenges that it may have, just like every other medium may have some challenges too. But if it's not new music's not breaking on the radio anymore, how valuable is it to me as an entertainment piece now? It's valuable in that it's always going. <laughs> you know, it's you, you just tune into a radio station and it's going. It doesn't stop. You don't have to think about it. You don't have to really uh, put any effort into it. Uh, if I open up Pandora or Spotify or anything like that, I have to say, okay, I want this type of thing. And you basically, <laughs> to, a, to a small degree, have to craft it yourself, mm -hmm. right? Radio, I'm, I'm going to pop on this radio station. Somebody is going to be feeding me music and uh, you know, talking to me about certain things. Literally no effort on my part except for dialing in that radio dial. Mm -hmm. And, hell, we don't even have a radio dial anymore, right? That's right. <laughs> so it's, 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 it's just completely served to us on a platter, if you will. And part of that just comes with, you know, the, the, the ads that bring you, uh, you know, this, this, this type of, uh, was it uh, a la carte <laughs> <laughs> kind of content. Well, you know, with... Here's what I what I've always wrestled with is if you are ahead of your industry, then you should be getting somewhere first. It's kind of how I think about it. If if you're constantly trying to make improvements, you should get there first. I think, in my opinion, you know, in my opinion, I, I feel like the radio stations are playing catch up in an industry that they created, because if they were at the forefront or if they were um, trying to look at new ways to be able to entertain people, how to capture audience and grow audiences, or even just figure out how technology was going to come into play, then Spotify and Pandora, Slacker Radio, those things would have never existed because they would have gotten there first. Do you see what I mean? So it's like when we think about like how much radio has changed, is it more the consumers change and radio is trying to catch up? Or are we, or is radio like behind everyone? Or is that medium behind everyone? And they're just like, hey, look at me. I'm still here. I'm still relevant. We know every car that's sold has a radio in it. We know that. But it's like, once I leave that car, where else do you have me? Right. You know, and we kind of see that with the, the established versus the upstart, right? And a lot of different kinds of mediums, you know, with the hotels, you know, with the hotels kind of being challenged by Airbnb, with taxis being uh, challenged by Lyft and Uber, you know, that kind of thing. You have the established, this is just how it's always been. Uh, you know, then you have the, the upstart thing, well, this is how it should be. Uh, and you look at radio and it's and it's really no different, you know. So you have, you, you want to listen to music, you turn on the radio and when whatever is running on the radio, that's what you're listening to. I remember back in the day when I was in my parents' van, I would have a, a, a blank tape, <laughs> you know, in there and I would try and get my mom to, you know, record whenever one of my favorite songs came on. So I, I don't really know what the first three or four seconds do any of my favorite songs sound like. Wow. So, uh, you know, that's, that's, that's kind of how it used to be. And, you know, with the upstarts, uh, they, they thought what's, what's, you know, going on with radio that we think could be better. And instead of somebody saying, you need to listen to this song now, I want to listen to whatever song I want to listen to at this point. 
Now, why radio or any kind of radio stations or any kind of you know radio company wouldn't have thought to do that? Who knows? You know. Wow. <laughs> but I mean, why why are cars still running on oil when we can do it on solar? But that's outside of the point. Wow. You wow. <laughs> it's just just you know a lot of times that's just how it always has been. Is enough of an answer to you know keep things going and you know if you're not going to jump on that thing and actually villainize something like that then you know we're still here might be enough of an answer that you know they think is warranted hmm. speaking of what's warranted i think what's probably more warranted is more conversation coming up so what we're going to do is we're going to take a break and we'll come right back and we're going to dive into more media and then we'll start talking about advertising this is the adcast You don't need a marketing agency. You do deserve very important placement. VIP Marketing and Advertising is a cutting-edge strategic digital, creative, media, and marketing partner that provides services for businesses of all sizes. To stay up to date on the latest marketing news, subscribe for email updates at veryimportantplacement.com. All right, so we're back with the AdCast. It's Jay and Eric here, and we were talking just about radio, some of the changes or how much the medium hasn't changed, how much it's trying to catch up to the consumer. And we don't want our radio friends to think like, hey, we're against the medium. We're just talking about the challenges that not only this medium faces, but a lot of other mediums as well. And you were saying, Jay? Oh, yeah. Um, You know, what really hasn't changed at all recently is the radio personality. You know, the, the disc jockey, the, the, the fun guy that you just want to tune in and listen to. Uh, morning shows, for instance. You know, if, if you have a favorite morning show, you're just going to hop in the car, listen to that person on your way in. You might even listen to it while you're doing your morning routine. You know, the, is, is the person that you want to listen to. You might not even know what they look like. <laughs> I, I, I noticed that one day. I listened to the same morning show when I was growing up every day, and I still couldn't pick them out of a lineup. You know, it's just I like their them as a radio personality. What do you think about, like, uh, we talked about radio, and I don't want our radio friends to think we're beating them up. So, And there's so many other mediums that we could talk about. But what about television? One of the things that I'm seeing now is more and more cord cutters. When I was in broadcast television, when I sold it once upon a time, the whole – our argument was, oh, people don't like cable. Cable's not broadcast. It looks like broadcast, smells like broadcast, but it's not broadcast, which is, you know, true to an extent. But then now it's like cable's kind of moved the needle more than traditional television has now because now they're they're in this they're in this content struggle where they're recreating shows and bringing back old shows. Magnum PI, um, Magnum PI, Roseanne's show. You know the the what do you call them the What's her last name in that show? I know her real name is Roseanne Barr. Yeah, the Roseanne show, whatever. See, it's not even important. So, but, but I mean, they're bringing back these old things for content and trying to introduce it to a new audience, and hopefully, like they can grab the new audience and and remind the old audience of what it was like to try and control a demographic. But it's just not working. It's just not working because now the networks are kind of realizing that. Prime time is my time. You don't control me anymore on Thursday nights or a prime nights, Thursday nights or Monday nights. Um, I watch it when I want to. When I was in television, uh, one of the hottest shows in prime time was Two and a Half Men. It was so great that we we had it in access. Uh, we we had it in early fringe. We had it in access, and we also had it in prime. And people would pay for that show. It was in such demand, but. Could two and a half men make it today where it's my time? I don't have to wait on you. I can watch it whenever I want. Oh, yeah. I mean, you look at two and a half men and another uh, another show that's, you know, utilizing one of those old school uh, kinds of formats, uh, Big Bang Theory, which is, you know, the the laugh track, the canned laughter. This is when you laugh, right? (laughs) Kind of thing, you know, and uh, uh, like with that Magnum P.I., kind of going back to the well to see what once worked and if it's going to work again. Mm -hmm. Um, Something like a two and a half men, if you were to take it, you know, out of a vacuum and place it new today, uh, it probably wouldn't work, right? We've kind of moved, we've kind of moved on to, um, you know, not laugh track. <laughs> uh, I, I, I don't know, what, you know, what kind of sitcom, you know, 
uh, format that's referred to nowadays, something like The Office, I guess. Mm-hmm. You know, that's that's inferred laughter. You know, something that tells a funny story and you laugh because you're not being told to. But then again, that kind of goes with the, I don't want to work too hard, <laughs> right? You know, I don't want to work too hard while I just sit here and consume my entertainment. You know, just serve me the funny jokes and tell me when to laugh and, and, and I'll laugh, you know. So the Big Bang Theory still is, is, is killing it. I think they're in their last season now. Um, but I think largely, you know, that might be the end of the the canned laughter thing and moving on into something, you know, that started with, you know, The Office, The Parks and Recs, The 30 Rocks, uh, that kind of thing where things are just funny because they're funny. And I think that it it lends credence to the authority of the viewer, you know, not taking your viewer for granted and understanding that some viewers actually want to, you know, work for their entertainment instead of being, you know, having it served to them. So... I mean, that's a great segue, too. I mean, the one thing that I do know is that the Internet will change television, but television will not change the Internet. I think television's having to conform to the Internet, you know. Um, So where should someone advertise? If I am that local or regional advertiser, and we talked about some of these challenges or disadvantages uh, or the advantages advantages that some of them have— so where should an advertiser spend their money? Because there are some advertisers who are committed to radio. They don't care if the audience goes up or down or up or down. They're just going to spend their money there. This is going to sound like a cop-out answer, but feel me. It's uh, where it makes sense. <laughs> uh, it, it, where it makes sense. Uh, we can't come in with you know our little uh, briefcase you know, with a one-size-fits-all you know. Uh, you know, machine that will get you leads or anything like that. It, because, you know, every, every, you know, business, every customer isn't created equal. So what, you know, if, if radio works for one, you know, uh, business, it might not, might not work for another business. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if, if TV, if broadcast TV works for one customer, uh, works for one business, works for one client, then it won't work won't necessarily work for another one. And I mean that to say that what whatever goals you come in, you know, is, is do, do you need one patient? Do you need one client? Do you need one customer? You know, and then we just need to spend a lot of, a lot trying to find that one, right? Mm-hmm. Do you need a lot? You know, uh, then we does it does it matter what kind of person comes to you? Do you not need to wade through a bunch of uh, I guess non-worthwhile uh, potential clients, potential customers, potential, uh, potential patients mm-hmm. to, to get to that, you know, golden goose? Or do you just want everybody to come in? You know what I mean? These are questions that you need to answer before you even think about, you know, where you're going to spend your money and what advertising medium needs to get your money. You need to figure out, first of all, who we want to come through our door, who we want to talk to, who we want to serve. And then you go to somebody and say, okay, this is who I need to bring in. And somebody like, you know, us, any kind of agency will say, okay, this is what you need to do. This is where we need to spend the money. And this is where we're going to cut the deals to get the people to come to you. I mean, that's that's so true. It's like, who's the target? I think, truthfully, a lot of advertisers who advertise right now don't know why they're advertising. <laughs> I, I asked... Uh, this was an, an automotive dealer in another market. I asked him, I said, why should people buy from you? And he couldn't answer. He couldn't tell me why people should buy from him. If he didn't know, then why would the market know? <laughs> and if he doesn't know, then he's just spending money. He's not advertising. He's just donating money to the stations. <laughs> if he doesn't know exactly who he's targeting, um, and who do you believe is your target message? I mean, I, I think, truthfully, some of these folks, they need to know that. They have to do their homework on, on, truthfully, who their audience is to say, my audience is Jay, a guy that gets up at 5 in the morning that does this. I mean, they should truthfully, like, paint a picture on who their core customer is. I, I remember, like, in my even in my radio days, like, we had this one cardboard cutout on what our perfect listener was, and we went after that target. And I think a lot of times it's like if the target is H for these advertisers and once in a while they get an A or a Z in the door, well, they want to spend the money going after the A saying, hey, I want more A's or I want more Z's, but that's not their core client. 
and then they lose track of who they are, the H's. And then what happens is they're spending money. They're spending money because they're trying to chase every letter in the alphabet now, and they're not getting results. And when a radio person walks in, they say, oh, I tried radio. Or a TV person walks in, I tried TV, you know? Um, and so it gets very, very difficult for them. Years ago, there was this, uh, there was an advertiser on local television. This is probably like 15, 20 years ago, and his, his name was uh, Cal from Cal's Furniture. Um, if anyone's from Charleston, South Carolina, they probably remember that story or, or remember that, that, that advertiser. And he always had this slogan, why pay more, you know? That's what he was saying. Why pay more? And so I I kind of think of that why pay more scenario when it comes to medium now, the medium now. Why am I going to pay more when you're not growing your audience? Why am I going to pay more when people are listening less? Why am I going to pay more when the medium has not changed a bit? Because no station, I mean, every station has to have an increase. That's how they have to make their numbers, right? But why am I going to pay more for a 6 a.m. news spot when there's more than 70 people a day, I think? Charleston Reelers Association said there's like 68 to 70 people a day moving to Charleston. But your news isn't growing, but you charge more. And the only excuse I hear is I can point at you and you, you can tell me. The only excuse we hear from them is what? That's just the way it is, I guess. Our inventory. Our inventory. <laughs> our inventory. It's, 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 it's it filling run. up fast, man. It, it won't run. Our inventory. Our, it won't run. Our inventory. And, and I, I, me being the smart aleck I am, I, I say, well, can I see your inventory sheet? Oh, no, we can't do that. <laughs> just so we can see how many units there are for sale. But, I mean, why should someone pay more when their audience, the radio's audience, I mean, their job is to infect the community also, I mean, we're not even listening to them for, like, you know, not number one music or new music anymore. We're not, because we can control that on our own, because um, we're going to play a song that's not in rotation. What I'm playing on my phone now may be in rotation 60 days from now, but why are we going to pay more when they're giving us less? Man, uh, traditional media has some good salespeople, don't they? Yeah. <laughs> I, I was one of them. I, they... they they establish relationships and do their jobs very well. And, uh, and that job is to sell inventory for as much as they can get out of someone. And that doesn't make them bad people. It makes them people with a job that sure. want to provide very well for their for their families. Absolutely, know? absolutely. And <laughs> when it when it comes down to, to people like us uh, that want to spend your money efficiently, that is in direct contrast to what a lot of these TV stations and radio stations and even cable uh, distributors want to do, which is to make more money. So uh, you see the the, the debate <laughs> yeah. that that just kind of uh, presents itself there. Um, we should pay more because we're in the we're in the age of big data, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, we're in the age of big data. If we if we need to pay more, it needs to make sense. So if the audience grows and we're paying more money to uh, reach a bigger audience, that would make sense. Mm-hmm. But at the same time. If our it's it's about it's about the per. If we're spending uh, x amount of money for x amount of people, and we have a cost per person, right? Mm-hmm. You know, these aren't very advanced metrics, but you kind of see where I'm coming from here. Mm-hmm. I'm paying this much to reach this many people. Now, if that audience increases, then I spend more. Then my cost per is still the same, right? That's that's the goal. Now, if we take the audience and keep it equal and they try and raise the rate, they're going to have to convince us why. Yes. And like you said, uh, there, 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 there are tricks, there are you know, ways that you can convince people that you need to pay this much, this much more. You know. The fear of loss. You won't run. Exactly. Higher. Exactly. You know, but for us, for us to make sense, it's like, okay, so if, if I'm going to pay more, then I have to get more targeted, right? We're in the age of big data. Right. Mm -hmm. We people, you know, Facebook got in tons of trouble for, you know, I guess not very uh, for being too big data. Yeah. For being too big data, you know, and what we can do essentially is if I want to spend a little bit more to make sure that I'm targeting the right kind of person. Yeah. That's when the cost per goes up. You know what I mean? So I don't want to spend X amount of money to reach X audience if 50% of that audience mm-hmm. doesn't care about my message. Mm-hmm. So 
I want to reach people that care about my message, inherently decreasing that audience 50% in this kind of, you know, uh, picture here. So that my cost per doubles, but the audience that I'm reaching now is much more likely to uh, become a customer, patient, Mm -hmm. anything, uh, a a worthwhile investment for my company. So that's when I can justify spending a little bit more. As long and the easy question, the, the easy answer is as long as it makes sense. As long as it makes sense. I think what makes sense is for us to allow these listeners to get back to what they're doing. I think we've burned up their ears enough. I think there's so much more conversation going around, and I want you guys to come back soon. The next episode is going to, we're going to discuss the digital divide and the digital wild, wild west. All right. So, what we're going to do is we're going to sign off. This is the ad cast today. I want to thank Jay for sitting in and being with me. And this is Eric, your host. I want you to be able to follow us on Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. You can follow the hashtag at Marketing Minute, where we give you free marketing advice every Monday. Follow VIP Marketing on Instagram and on Facebook at VIP Marketing One. Craft Creative for awesome video production at WeCraftCreative.com. This is the AdCast, and we would love you to go give us a rating. One star is cool. <laughs> Not so much, but a five star is even better. Have a great day. Copyright VIP Marketing and Advertising, produced by Craft Creative. When all eyes are on you, make it count. From audio to video to graphic design and more, Craft Creative can do it all. We don't make commercials. We craft creative. See what we can do for you at wecraftcreative.com.